Marcus Aurelius says, the happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. Marcus Aurelius was a Roman emperor from 161 to 180 AD and a very prominent figure within the philosophy of Stoicism. At its core, Stoicism teaches us to distinguish between what we can and cannot control and encourages us to focus on what we can control, which is mainly our thoughts and actions, and accept what we cannot. This mindset shift is like putting on a mental armor that shields us from negative thoughts and unnecessary worries. By directing our attention to our thoughts and actions, Stoicism empowers us to actively shape our responses to life's challenges. It encourages us to find solutions and opportunities for growth, instead of getting overwhelmed by things beyond our control. Through Stoicism, we learn to view difficulties with a constructive mindset, turning adversity into a chance to learn, adapt, and emerge stronger. During his rule, Aurelius found the time to construct a series of autobiographical writings, now known as the Meditations. These meditations have become some of the most important texts within Stoic philosophy. And so, in this video, we'll talk about how to think positively from the philosophy of Marcus Aurelius. Realize the importance of thought. Aurelius says, It's time you realize that you have something in you more powerful and miraculous than the things that affect you and make you dance like a puppet. Thinking is such a natural, expected, and constant activity that we often forget the power a thought can have. In other words, we take our thoughts for granted. Stoics, in contrast, place a lot of importance on the act of thinking, and even more importantly, being conscious of this act. According to Mr. Aurelius, your thoughts determine your life. Thoughts can paralyze and thoughts can inspire one to take action. Take, for example, fearful thoughts. Some people can get hung up on everything that could go wrong. This has an effect on their body, an increase in adrenaline, shaking, nervous breathing, as well as their actions. Most likely, these kinds of thoughts and bodily feelings encourage someone to refrain from taking action. But now, think of motivating thoughts, of someone who thinks of everything they could achieve if they take a certain action, who thinks of all that they have achieved in the past and of all their capabilities and possibilities. Learn to transform your thoughts. To quote Aurelius, here is a rule to remember in future, when anything tempts you to feel bitter, not this is misfortune, but to bear this worthily is good fortune. Our thoughts, especially the spontaneous ones, are loaded with value judgments and conclusions. We automatically judge anything we come across or think about. Is it fun, boring, beautiful, ugly, successful, a failure? Are we satisfied with our life or unsatisfied? Is our plan a good or bad idea? This way of thinking might seem logical and helpful, but can, in fact, be very damaging. Oftentimes, one thinks that their judgments are based on facts, but this is rarely true. You rarely have all the facts, and the way you assess those facts you do have is tainted by emotions and bias. Generally, your thoughts are not shaped by reality but by your perception of it, and if you change your perception and consequently your thoughts, you can truly change your life. As soon as you've judged something negatively, in other words, have a negative thought about something, it's hard to act despite that thought. For example, if halfway through the day, you have a thought about this being an awful day, you quickly lose the motivation to make the day better. If you've deemed a person annoying, you won't try to build a relationship with them anymore. Moreover, you might even linger on these kinds of thoughts and have them become recurring complaints. But having an awful day might be a conclusion you draw after you have a bad interaction with your boss which was in reality only a fraction of your whole day. And you could deem a person annoying after having met them twice and barely knowing anything about them. The conclusions you draw are too quick and not well considered, but they get stuck. And the worst, most harmful part of having those kinds of thoughts is the way they influence the actions you take. Not only do they prevent you from taking positive action, they can also cause you to take negative action, such as complaining. Most people who complain go too far with it. They spend so much of their valuable energy on complaining that there's even less energy left to take positive action. Practice premeditatio malorum, 
Aurelius advises us, when you wake up in the morning, tell yourself, the people I deal with today will be meddling, ungrateful, arrogant, dishonest, jealous, and surly. Premeditatio malorum, translated as premeditation of evils or anticipation of adversity, is a stoic exercise that involves thinking ahead and preparing for potential challenges. Marcus Aurelius, a practitioner of this exercise, deliberately considered possible setbacks each morning. While this might seem unusual, it became a powerful tool for fostering his positive thinking. Instead of being surprised by problems, he started each day knowing there might be difficulties and by mentally preparing for such challenges, he was prepared to handle whatever came before him. He faced them calmly and flexibly, which not only helped him handle worries, but also made him stronger and more prepared for challenges. Stoicism's approach to this negative visualizing can be compared to a sturdy oak tree in a storm. Problems and challenges are like strong winds and rain, but Stoicism teaches us to stand strong and resilient instead of breaking easily. In our modern world, this means not letting tough times crush us completely. It's like checking the weather forecast for your life by imagining potential problems and preparing mentally just like an oak tree strengthens its roots. This doesn't mean becoming pessimistic. Instead, it's about being realistic and ready. Imagine planning a big picnic with friends and you are responsible for bringing the food. Applying stoicism in this situation means thinking about what could go wrong before the picnic day arrives. Considering possible challenges, like the weather turning rainy or dietary restrictions, is like packing an extra umbrella and planning a menu that accommodates everyone's needs. In the modern world, stoicism helps us become savvy event planners, ready for unexpected hiccups. When the actual picnic day comes, we're better prepared for surprises, like a sudden rain shower or last minute dietary requests. Ultimately, stoicism encourages us to be like that resilient oak tree, standing tall in the face of life's storms. It promotes a mindset that embraces challenges with strength and adaptability, ensuring we're better prepared to weather the storms that life may bring. Stoicism, with its emphasis on virtue and wisdom, aligns with the idea that genuine gratitude involves recognizing the interconnectedness of one's experiences and the contributions of others. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to check out our full Philosophies for Life playlist and for more videos to help you find success and happiness. Using beautiful philosophical wisdom, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.